Originally, when I was planning out the series on Wednesdays 5, I planned for 9 episodes. So, I don't know, consider this 10th one a bonus, I guess? The reason I wanted to make this episode about what's coming to Windows 365 and Microsoft's plans for the service is that as I was writing the scripts for the different episodes, I found that a couple of my favorite features for Windows 365 just wasn't launched yet. Things like the switch and the boot features are features that I really love the idea of and we've heard about them for a while, but they are still not ready. So that is what we are going to be looking at in this video. Features that we know are coming and a little glance into the crystal ball. Curiously enough, both the switch and boot features as well as the offline feature are all missing from the public roadmap for Windows 365. So I'm guessing this either means that they are far away from even getting to a preview state or that they are planning for a major announcement of some sort. Let's cross our fingers and hope it's the latter. If you want to check out the roadmap for Windows 365 for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description. But let us start with the features that I'm most looking forward to, the switch, boot and offline features. The switch feature is basically a feature that incorporates your cloud PC into the multiple desktops feature of Windows. So you can quite easily switch between your local desktop and your cloud PC. This would be great for use cases where you do most of your daily work on your local device, but for some tasks you use your cloud PC. Take for example offloading. You can edit a video, create huge 3D animations or something like that. And then when the time comes to render out the final work, you can just do that in your cloud PC and then continue on working on your local device. And then you can easily switch back and forth if you want to check the progress. Another example is where you want to allow your users to mostly work on their local device, but then there are a tiny subset of applications that either needs to be run in close vicinity of some servers or you want those applications to run in more locked down environments. This is where you could use the cloud PCs and the switch feature would make it a whole lot easier for your users to switch back and forth. But for me personally, as a consultant working for multiple organizations, I would love the option to have multiple cloud PCs as different desktops. That would make my life a whole lot easier and for the organizations hiring externals, the use of cloud PC is already a perfect use case. I just don't know if Microsoft is planning to allow for being logged into Windows 365 with multiple user accounts, but that is my hope for the switch feature. Now over to the boot feature for Windows 365. This essentially replaces the local desktop altogether. You power on your local device and after signing in through Windows Hello, you are presented with the desktop on your cloud PC. The local device still needs to be running Windows 11, but this is a neat little feature that goes well with either shared devices or for skimping out on the specs of the local device. I guess you can really compare it to Chromebooks, if you will, because it allows you to have a local device with minimal hardware specs and therefore long battery life, since all the compute is done in the cloud. The third of my most anticipated features is the offline feature. I'm guessing that you can understand what this is just based off the name. And yeah, it's the ability to use your cloud PC when you are offline. Just how Microsoft is planning to make this possible is unknown to me, and I see a couple of challenges with this feature. One is the resyncing of your offline copy of your cloud PC with the online copy. I see potential for data corruption here, either if your connection goes down again while resyncing, or if you somehow log into the online copy before the offline copy is completely resynced. I'm sure Microsoft will find a smooth solution to this, but I do have some worries here. Another issue I see around this is the hardware specs, because one of the benefits of using a cloud PC is that your local device doesn't necessarily need to have as good specs as your Windows 365 license. And if you then enter offline mode, all the hardware you have available is the local one. So that would mean your cloud PC will potentially run a lot slower when in offline mode which would be a shame. 
So as you can tell, I do have some concerns around the offline feature, but I'm really looking forward to see how Microsoft will handle them. That was my three most anticipated features for Windows 365, but if we take a look at the roadmap, there are also other cool features in the works. As an admin, for example, you might be looking forward to, uh, I don't know, um, this one here, which has the custom name template for cloud PCs in provisioning policies. So finally, we can have custom names for our cloud PCs. Thank you. Another highlight would be the option to downsize a cloud PC or the option to resize multiple cloud PCs at once through group-based licensing. So scroll on through the roadmap. I am sure you'll find features that will do you or your organization good in the future. But keep in mind that Windows 365 has become somewhat of a flagship for Microsoft. So they are really putting in a lot of effort into developing the service with new features, both for the end user, the IT admins and organizations as a whole. I see a lot of good things coming to Windows 365, both in terms of what is on the roadmap today, things that are announced that hasn't made it there yet, and things that are just plain logical that will come at some point in time. Like, for example, a Chromebook-like device from Microsoft that only runs a cloud PC. That would be really cool in terms of portability and battery life, for example. We have also started seeing more devices that support Windows 365. Uh, for example, LG started rolling out TVs that has built-in support for Windows 365. So you can just attach a keyboard and mouse and you have your work from home setup already. As an example, there are a lot of cool stuff happening around Windows 365. If you are looking for alternatives to Windows 365, I recommend you check out Azure Virtual Desktop or DevBox. I have some videos on them over here. This will be the last episode I do on Windows 365 for now, but I'm sure I will do more in the future, so subscribe if you want that. Hit the thumbs up if you found this video or the series helpful, and uh, yeah, cheers.